In 2017, Hurricane Harvey wreaked havoc in both Texas and Louisiana. Let's see what happened. This is common when hurricanes or these natural disasters occur. Two things typically happen. This upper line here is talking about consumer behavior. Consumers knew that in the short future, they might be unable to get gas, you know, shortages. Um, and what they do is they start panic buying. This is almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Notice that before anything happens, prices of gas haven't changed. So what we are looking at here in isolation is just a sudden change of preferences driving consumer behavior. We are going to represent this by an increase in demand. On the other hand, we also see, and this is very common as well, is a disruption in supply. Transporting fuel from storage terminals to stations has been extremely challenging. Basically, gas stations would be running out of gas because there just wasn't enough gas available. What we see here then is a decrease in supply. At any level of the price, sellers are able to sell a smaller amount of gas than they were selling before. So this exercise is going to require us to combine these two changes and see what happens to equilibrium price and quantity. So let's start. We have to start somewhere. So I suggest we start with a higher demand for gas representing this. Even before we get to it, we need to take a photograph of our market. What do I mean by a photograph? We need to pinpoint exactly what equilibrium price is and what equilibrium quantity is. So equilibrium is that price that sets quantity demanded equal to quantity supplied. It happens there where the two curves meet. And then we have P star zero and Q star zero in general, we use these asterisks to denote a situation of equilibrium. Now let's shock this market. Let's begin with a higher demand for gas. We know that our demand curve is going to shift to the right. So let's shift it. If this was the only change that we were studying, just the higher demand for gas, we would take another um, photograph of our market, identify equilibrium, see what happened to price and quantity, we would be done. However, we know that there were challenges in gas distribution and our supply is going to shift to the left. Now, as we decide on how to draw this problem, we have a choice to make. How exactly are we going to draw this shift to the left of the supply curve. And specifically, are we going to shift it to the left by just a little smidge? You know, make it a change in supply smaller in magnitude than the change in demand? Are we going to make the two changes the same? Meaning I'm going to shift my supply curve to the left by as much as I shifted my demand curve to the right? Or third case, Am I going to make a big shift of my supply curve and way bigger than the shift that I did for the demand curve? I don't know. I wasn't told in this exercise which of the shifts were greater. So I'm just going to have to look at the three of them. Okay, so let's start. In our first case, we are going to see that the change in demand, the increase in demand is going to be greater in magnitude than my change in supply. So I'm going to, sh to shift my supply curve to the left, but by a smaller amount, you see that it moved less than my demand curve moved. Okay, now you know the steps that we need to follow. Let's take a snapshot of this equilibrium. We know that this new equilibrium is going to occur at the intersection of my two new curves, there it is. And now I have a new pair of equilibrium quantity and equilibrium price. Here they are. 
if the change in demand is greater than the change in supply, my price is going to go up. It went up from P0 to P1A. And I know that in this case, my equilibrium quantity is also going to go up. This is happening because the magnitude of the demand effect pulling my quantity upward is greater. Second case scenario, I am going to make these two shifts exactly the same, meaning I am going to shift my supply to the left by as much as I shifted my demand curve to the right. Now, if this was a situation that I was analyzing, so this is number two, I have my increase in demand exactly matching my decrease in supply. This is the drawing that I would be looking at. Now, let's take another snapshot of this equilibrium, which now my two new curves are going to cross here. They're going to intersect there. So now I know that I have a new alternative equilibrium. And this equilibrium represents a price that is even higher than my original price over here. And now look at what happens to quantity. Nothing, right? The reason why this is happening, it's because my demand curve shifted to the right and my supply curve shifted to the left by the exact amount. So they're pulling in opposite directions, but they're pulling with equal force. So nothing is happening to quantity. Okay, now third case scenario. I am going to suppose that the shock to the supply side was way bigger than my shock to the demand side, meaning that the challenges in distribution wreaked a way bigger havoc than the panic buying. So in this case, my increase in demand is going to be smaller than the decrease in supply, meaning I am going to shift my supply curve to the left by a lot here. Very assertive shift. You know, the idea we are going to be looking again for the new equilibrium. This is where the two curves cross. It's going to happen over here. And there it is. I have a new equilibrium price and quantity pair, and it occurs there. What we see is that my new price is even greater than before. And if you think about it, it makes sense because when demand increases, it puts an upward pressure on price. Try it. Draw just that, um, just that graph and you will see that any increase in demand is going to put an upward pressure on price, meaning equilibrium price is going to rise. At the same time, I know that a decrease in supply, also taken in isolation, is always going to be, also going to put an upward pressure on price. So I have these two elements fueling up each other. So they're putting a lot of pressure up on price. And actually, let me put it over here. So without a doubt, we know that regardless of the magnitudes of the effects, the price is going to go up. What I don't know is what's going to happen to equilibrium quantity. It's not that I don't know <laughs> what's going to happen. I know that I don't know. And that's a start. What we call this effect, we call this an ambiguous effect. It's ambiguous because without more information, I don't know in which direction this effect went. I know that if my demand change is dominant, I know that my equilibrium quantity will increase. If, however, I'm at the complete opposite example, if it is the case that the challenges in supply wreak a bigger havoc than the increase in demand, then I know that the magnitude of my supply effect is going to dominate. And in that case, my equilibrium quantity would actually go down. Because I don't have enough information about the magnitude of those effects, the only solace I find is in knowing that I don't know.
or knowing that I know that the effect is ambiguous. You get the point. I also suggest you draw uh, in isolation a decrease in supply to see what would happen to equilibrium price and quantity just with that effect in isolation so that you see that when you add the two up, price, the effect on price on both cases is to increase, to put an upward pressure on price. However, the effect on quantity, they go in opposite directions. So which one is dominant? We don't know without further information. I hope this video is useful.